Hayley Ladd is out after suffering an injury on international duty for Wales. Jackie Grunnan starts in midfield. Leo Galton returns on the wing. Martha Thomas starts for only the seventh time this season up front. Peter Boarisa and Sinja Brun drop to the bench. It's the same City eleven that beat United 1-0 at the Academy Stadium. So the match winner, Caroline Weir, starts on the bench. Seven of the starters appeared for England at the successful Arnold Clark Cup competition, including Georgia Stanway, who became City's all-time record goal scorer in the previous round of the Cup with a hat-trick against Nottingham Forest. So just two weeks since the last one, we're back again. A different venue, but the same intentions. The rivalry between these two is growing by the game. Their fourth meeting already this season. And this time in the FA Cup, it is all or nothing. A place in the quarterfinals at stake. Elizabeth Sims, the referee today. entertaining two-all draw between these two in the WSL match here at Lee Sports Village. It will not finish that way this afternoon. We're going all the way if it finishes as a draw in the 90 minutes. Will it be a statement win for Manchester United? Or will it be Manchester City who make their way to the quarterfinals? Yet again, they have not been knocked out before that stage in their history. Katie Zellum, the Manchester United captain, and Ellen White, the captain. And you will note that Ellen White has requested to be able to wear a yellow armband around her left arm in support of the people of the Ukraine. Before the action begins, all players, the referee, take the knee, showing their support, opposition against all forms of discrimination. Terrific atmosphere inside Lee Sports Village. And Siobhan Chamberlain, just two weeks ago, these two met. Are we expecting anything different at all? I think they're both going to be going all out for this. They both know how important the FA Cup is. Manchester City, as we said, will want some silverware with their performance in the in the league not being up to where they'd expect it to be. And Manchester United still looking for that first trophy. Ellie Roebuck, one of a number of City players who missed the opening stages of the season. A welcome return to her, but really a big blow to the side that the news of Steph Horton's relapse of her Achilles injury surgery required. Unlikely she'll play again this season. As Bronze tries to get away. Hannah Blundell, two-time FA Cup winner with Chelsea. Gonna work something down the line. Leah Galton will be a player that Manchester United, I'm sure, will try to get involved as soon as possible in this game. She missed the last game, um, but Thankfully for United, she's back fit, would have had the international break to, to get back fit and, and she'll be a key player for them, challenging against Lucy Bronze. As a number of these players have been busy over the last week or so. A lot of them played just on Wednesday night, so tight turnaround and goodness me, Coldwell nearly gave the ball away in a very dangerous area. Lauren Hemp had a really early opportunity in the game just a couple of weeks ago and had that gone in, it could have changed things completely for the game. So United won't want to be making early mistakes across that back line because they will get punished. Ellen White just crowded out. 
Demi Stokes picks it up for City. Now Hemp. Star continues to rise. At brilliant displays at the Arnold Clark Cup. Greenwood will slip it through. Bodies flying everywhere, but it's Stokes who comes away with the ball. Tries to pull it back for Lasada. United clear their lines up towards Thomas. That's a really intelligent header. But Hemp tight to Russo and City back in possession. It's interesting to see Martha Thomas starting today ahead of Signebrun. Potentially from that long ball there, it might be they're looking for her as a target player more than a player that's going to be clever and combining with, with players, bringing players into play. And perhaps I, I'll be sure to see Brum later on in the game. It's away on international duty, Brun, so perhaps a little rotation required. City looking dangerous, it's White. Bounce right in front of Earps, who watched it all the way. An early sighter for Ellen White, and you'd think for, from the change of um, ends that Manchester City chose, they'd like to take some early opportunities, some early shots against Mary Earps. She's got the sun in her eyes, and as a former goalkeeper, it definitely makes a difference. Less so with balls on the floor, but as soon as it goes in the air, it can be very difficult to judge. Were you a cap wearer? Definitely not. <laughs> Prefer to have the sun in your eyes than wear a cap. Greenman makes the clearance. Going back to cap wearing decisions, for me, as soon as you put your head up in the air to look for the ball, the sun's in your eyes anyway, so it's kind of adjust to it as much as you can and, and hope that you don't have too much to do. Mark Skinner enjoying the sunshine as well but as Willie Kirk said in the build-up here could really use a statement win they have beaten City this season the Continental Cup but ultimately it is City who will line up in the final next week against Chelsea we need to start racking up these wins against the other top three sides in the Women's Super League there's Jess Park City Academy graduate She's a player that's really starting to grow into this team. She's getting lots of regular minutes, lots of plaudits, people even touting her for, for a late spurt into that Euro squad. And it's a, it's a good person to be playing in front of. When you know you've got Lucy Bronze defending behind you, it's going to fill you with confidence, I'm sure. Bronze still working her way back to full fitness. City looking a little bit slicker, and that was a late challenge from Zellem on her opposite number. Clattered to Stanway. Smart turn there from Georgia Stanway and Katie Zellen was not having any of that. If the ball's going past me, you're not going past me with it. And the, uh, well, the referee not finished with Zellen yet. Wants a word. Are you already on a final warning perhaps? Yeah, I don't think it necessarily was worth a yellow card, but I'm sure a conversation there saying you do that again, you're definitely getting a yellow. And playing in the middle of the park in a game like this, you don't want to be on a yellow card that early. A long diagonal from Greenwood. And she's found Jess Park, but Blundell close to her. A brilliant ball there from Alex Greenwood. She's really developing so well into this centre-back role. She was fantastic for England across the whole of the Algar... Uh, Algarve, the whole of the Arnold Clark Cup competition. It's a mouthful, that one. But, but she's been brilliant. Her distribution is fantastic, but also her, de her defending has developed so well. And she's someone that's very dependable for Manchester City and for England at the moment. And that centre-half partnership with Steph Horton out, and like for the foreseeable future, is going to be an interesting one. The Euros coming up live on the BBC this summer. First corner of the game, and it is going to be from the left boot of Alex Greenwood. Taken short. The return pass wasn't exactly what she'd like, but uh, Greenwood will still make something of this. But the referee now has blown the whistle. Don't think Alex Greenwood will be too pleased with Jess Park there. There's a hospital ball set back to her. She probably did really well to, to escape that without actually picking up any kind of injury. Manchester United will 
Try and work their way out from the back. Zello, not a deft touch on to Thomas. And this is promising. Roebuck, though, out of her goal smartly. Very good goalkeeping there from Ellie Roebuck. It looks simple, but you've got to have a high line to be able to prevent those balls from coming through. Nice play, though, from United, wasn't it? Yeah, brilliant. We've seen at times United have overplayed playing out from the back, but when it works, it works well, and they commit so many bodies forward to the attack. Ella Toon there on that back line, stretching it, was nearly threw in on goal. Oh, now. It's a wayward pass. And uh, a corner conceded when uh, didn't really need to. I'm not too sure many of the Manchester City players had any idea where that ball was going. I think at one stage, Ellie Roebuck looked a bit concerned it might even end up in the back of the net. A new ball needed as well. Katie Zellum getting ready to take the corner kick. the second meeting between these two in the FA Cup. City with a 3-2 win a couple of seasons ago. Delivered well by Katie Zellum all the way through and over the bar. Maria torres Dottier ghosting in. Another brilliant delivery from Katie Zellum. Puts it into difficult areas to defend. And I'm not sure how torres Dottier managed to get that over there. It looks easier to get it into the back of the net. She'll be incredibly frustrated by that. Whether she took her eye off at the last minute, whether Ellen White did just enough to put her off. Kennedy up to Jess Park, who does well to meet it. Coldwell now goes long, trying to find Galton. Another good, accurate, long pass from a centre-half. Coming a feature of this game already. And the throw-in goes Manchester United's way. The lovely switch ball there from Caldwell. I think Katie Zellen was trying to encourage the team to keep playing, to keep switching it across, maintain possession. But if you know you've got the pace of Leah Galton, yes, she's up against Lucy Bronze, which is tough. And you can see her on that back shoulder. You're going to deliver the ball. Stanway snapping into the challenge and winning it. There's Torres Dottier, FA Cup winner as well with Chelsea. Russo. And Lasada closed down by Grunen. striding forward and finding Lauren Hemp who can uh, put on the accelerator now and finds Park in a lot of space a little bit too much weight on the pass sends her wider than she'd like but still gets the cross in Park well defended in the first instance now perhaps Manchester United can break two back to Coldwell Badia gives it straight back to City. I think that's going to be the frustrating thing for Mark is how hard they're working, how hard their press is. They're pressing high up the pitch. You see how much Ella Toon's releasing to step up on that back line. When they regain possession, you've got to use it more effectively. Ona Badia, they just forced it long. They've got the quality to be able to play it around at their back. Hold on to the ball for a little bit longer. Give yourself some breathing space so when you do attack, you've got the momentum to be able to do it. Big game this for both sides. Gareth Taylor, his second season, his first season he won the FA Cup against Everton at an empty Wembley Stadium. Be desperate to get back there in front of a, a full crowd. Oh, 
Manchester United come away from that particular battle with Thomas. It's a neat pass on oh, a brilliant save from Roebuck. A vicious drive from Melatoon. An ambitious drive, but that's where we want to see her. Getting involved on the edge of the box, getting her shots away nice and early. Quick touch and quick shot. A great stop by Ellie Roebuck and over the crossbar, but it's there where we see Martha Thomas drifting a little bit wider. Gives Elatoon the space to come more central and get involved, get those shots away. And we've seen how many shots she's, goals she scored this season, assists she's, she's got. That's the position that Manchester United want to see her in. Another Zellum delivery, and it's all the way in. It's crept in at the far post, and Manchester United lead. I'm not sure if she was aiming for that back post, but it's a brilliant delivery. Evaded every single Manchester City player. There's got to be questions asked defensively. Does Ellie Robert get drawn to that near post space? She's got to hold her ground a little bit more, but it's a brilliant delivery. And it's 1-0 one one to Manchester United. Perfect start for Mark Skinner's side. And it crept in unaided. A quite brilliant delivery from Katie Zellum. She'd threatened from the first one. And that second one was inch perfect. So what of the City response? There being a suggestion, perhaps, of a touch at the back post from Diane Caldwell. We'll need to run that back again. Bronze sends it forward. Whoever got the final touch of on that was pretty much undefendable, that delivery. I, I could be being overcritical, but I think if you hold your ground more centrally, I think everyone got drawn to that near post space. And then as soon as the ball's going over you, it's difficult to then backtrack. Foul on bronze. I was saying, I think, I think if you hold more centrally in the goal, look, Ella Toon is a nuisance there. She drags Ellie Roebuck more, sent, more to the near post space. If she holds centrally, she can come and deal with that ball. She's got the ability to come and claim or even get a punch. So United play with a lot of confidence now. A lot of confidence and, and they've been rather untroubled at the back, really, that the Mary Earps hasn't really been called into any action. Mark will be very pleased with his performance of his team so far. The, he asked for more aggressive pressure and he's got exactly that. One of the things with Manchester United is can they take control of situations? Can they score goals when they're, when they're on top? Today they've done that. They haven't necessarily been doing that as much against the big teams as they could have done in the past. So that's a key moment moving forwards for them. Manchester City three times winners of the FA Cup. The campaign may be coming to an end prematurely. They've uh, always made it to the quarterfinals. Their eighth season is uh, in their new guise anyway. Poorly done by Kennedy back to Roebuck, whose clearance is picked up and Lasada. Long way to go, we must say. Now Manchester City certainly have the quality on the pitch and of course on the subs bench they can always bring on Caroline Weir she's good for a goal against Manchester United usually Hemp causing all sorts of problems such energy the bounce of the ball favours United 
slight error there from Zellens, giving it away. Here's Park. Bronze motoring down the inside. Corner kick. You talk so much as a player of the importance of the five and ten minutes after you concede and after you can score a goal. And Manchester United there, they had five players up against Manchester City's back line. They were still continuing to go for it. They weren't sitting back at all. And potentially that could cost them if they don't they don't defend as resolutely as potentially they could have to after going a goal up if the momentum gets a little bit too much ahead of them. Well, let's see what Greenwood can do. She can be as effective as Katie Zellum. It's a deep delivery. Well defended. Back in by Stanway and nodded on and into the gloves of Mary Earps. Comfortable claim there for Mary Earps. She'll be pleased to get a good early touch. She hasn't been that involved in the game. She's had to come off her line a couple of times for, for through balls. But you always like to get a nice, good early touch. And if it's a comfortable one, it always helps as well. Here's Colton. Gronen. Two. Defending from the front, Alex Greenwood. A very high up position for centre half. there but not from Ellie Roebuck of course we hear a few faint boos every time Alex Greenwood touches the ball former Manchester United captain just for one season a championship winning season before moving to Lyon and then back to these shores of Manchester City and she is the only player in the squad to have featured in every single game so far this season not just featured as well, she, she's been brilliant. She's been one of their players that they rely on heavily. Distribution starts off attacks, defends well at the same time. And a player that's really grown into that role. City are aggressive in their pursuit of winning the ball back, but United matching them. Well, on to Katie Zellum. A grunt. Challenged, dispossessed by Walsh. Now Stanway. White now helping it on to Park. Bronze always an option. Would expect City to have the greater amount of possession. You probably would, you'd probably expect them to have definitely had more of the play at the moment, but Manchester United are pressing so high. You think potentially Man City, they stick with their style of play, they don't change, but if you've got that many bodies pressing high up the pitch, is it better just to bypass it? Go long, go beyond the press, play to your players that are high up the pitch that can cause Manchester United problems in their defensive line. As you mentioned earlier in the season, they were caught playing out from the back. Most religiously, they were doing that and that 6-1 defeat to Chelsea here in particular. And it is interesting how they've evolved and tweaked their approach. Most definitely. It's about understanding what your manager wants you to do. You want to play nice football. You want to be able to play out from the back, but also understanding the moments that you can and can't do it. It's about understanding who's pressing you, the moment in the game and making good choices. But there's nothing wrong with going long and direct if it's done with a purpose. That's caused a few problems. So Martha Thomas pulled up for a handball.
Manchester United still two points ahead of City in the WSL both in pursuit of that Champions League spot is Park Bromis Park the dangerous looking ball in but out of play they're the kind of balls that Manchester City need to be putting on top of Mary Oaks. Yes, that one was slightly overplayed, slightly overhit. But we said before about the, the, the sun in her eyes and, and the difficulty that goalkeepers can sometimes deal with, have problems with with that. If you've got this for the 45 minutes, you've only got another 25, 26 minutes now. But can you start getting those deliveries in from wide areas, from distance, taking pop shots? Torres Dottir is scurrying away from Park over the top and Thomas will give chase oh Roebuck to give it straight to Zellum who I think was taking a first time shot yeah, that, that was definitely a first time shot the quality wasn't there but you saw you saw the vision you saw her eyes open up as soon as she saw that that miss hit back pass would have been quite audacious to have scored a goal from there I'm sure not the first time those back passes have been uh, well, exactly comfortable, fairly Roebuck this afternoon. Here's Grunen. And Russo loses it. Stokes onto Stanway. Park always in a lot of space, but City taking their time to play it from one side to the other this time. Stokes, it's a promising run. Excellent pass out wide for Lauren Hemp. Tracking from uh, Zellum. Danger still not cleared. Good feet. Kilosada. Maybe a little too complex. I think her Spanish compatriot knew how her brain worked there with that flick. Ona Badje just dropped in, anticipated the flick and managed to clear it away from safety. There is a hold up. I think maybe the referee wasn't happy with where the subs were warming up, perhaps. All congregated down there. In the sun, lucky them. No tan for us today, Siobhan. Definitely in the shade, the shady part of the ground. I mean, I don't think I, I've found a, a commentary gantry yet that's in the sunshine. If anyone knows of any, please do let me know and I'll put in some match requests. <laughs> it's probably for the best, <laughs> to be honest. Definitely a derby feel. United trying to win it back high up the pitch. Lasada trying to bring it away. Here's Russo, McGrunan, Elatoon trying to turn. Really close control, but Greenwood will get this one away. Hemp closed down by Grunen. Nice is still trying to win the ball very high up. Greenwood closed down by Badia. And eventually is forced to make the clearance. Really confident, aggressive play from Manchester United. We heard we heard Gareth Taylor say in the in the pre-game build-up that he thought his team would take confidence from the last game into today's game. And if you thought any team was taking confidence into this game, it would be Manchester United at the moment.
Caruso. Layoff for Elatoon. Thomas manipulating the ball and having a shot straight at Roebuck. Comfortable handling from Ellie Roebuck there. A good shot, sharp shot from Martha Thomas from the edge of the box. But Manchester United finding ways to open up this Manchester City defence. Albadia. Coldwell. Thomas had made the run in behind, but well read by Kennedy and now Russo. Zellum. Another really good play out to the flags. Golton. Oh, slips it through brilliantly for Blundell. Pulls it back and Zellum's shot is shut down. Brilliant, incisive play from United. Brilliant play on this left wing. It's the first time really Hannah Blundell's got high up the pitch and combined with Leah Golton. We've seen time and time again the way that they can combine and provide assists. But for me, Jess Park's got to do better there. She switched off and left Lucy Bronze 2v1. And United turn this spell of pressure into a second goal. Another really good pass. Zellum into the middle. City get it away once again. Katie Zellum having a terrific game. She's really dictating the play in, in the middle of the park. She's having so much space and time on the ball. And, and we know time and time again, she's done it this season, last season. When she's on a set piece, she can deliver pinpoint accuracy and assists, goals. She, she's been fantastic for United this season. But these are the moments, Siobhan. United on top, they need to capitalise. They do, and that's where time and time again against the top teams when they dominate sections of games they don't score enough when they're on top and then other teams punish them that's an error two on one it's Ellen White Torres Dottir has done brilliantly there could White have released that a little bit earlier a real opportunity Greenwood United not punished for a lapse in their defence Park Closing down Kennedy. Worked out to Lauren Hemp. Chopping inside and losing the ball eventually. Russo helping out Ona Badia. spell of possession for City United standing firm at the moment yeah really good spell probably their, their best spell so far but it means nothing if when you get good opportunities in front of goal you make poor selection choices Sada's scoop this time does work out and she gets the return ball as well doesn't get the better of Badia doesn't get the better of her but does end up winning her, her team a corner and seen the quality of set pieces on show so far today. Manchester City, I'm sure, will be looking to emulate that of Manchester United. Go back to that, that opportunity where Ellen White 
capitalised on the error. I, I agree with you. It should have been slipped through early to Park. Fantastic defending from Thoris Dot here, but White could have made it a lot simpler. Lasada over this one. Pumping header away from Russo. Helped on by Toon. Grunen trying to put Demi Stokes under pressure. He calmly deals with that. Tremendous ball from Greenwood. Pinpoints to Park. Let's put out a play for another corner kick. I think the ball potentially looked like it had already gone out, but the assistant on this side just flagged for a, a corner, then followed by a goal kick and then back down for a corner again. Um, I think it looked like it had already gone out. Hard to see. I think we need goal line technology for that decision. So we'll go with the referee and the assistant. Taken short this time. A bit of a miscue and uh, fair play to Lucy Bronze for trying that on the edge of the penalty area. Brennan, under severe pressure, keeps the ball. A sharp turn from Zellum. And then a free kick comes her way. A really mature performance from Katie Zellum so far today. I think she's really done well in the middle of the park. She's held on to it. She's commanded. She's given instructions to her back line about what she wants them to do with the ball. And that always helps as a goalkeeper, as a defender. If you've got someone in the middle of the park dictating play, giving you information, it helps you organise your style of play, where you're going to play next and make great decisions. Really competitive first half. United in the lead thanks to a, a goal straight from a corner from Zellum. Goal kick, the decision this time. I'm sure that ball ever convincingly looked like it actually crossed the line. No, never never fully went across the line. So for Demi Stokes' sake, it's a good, it's a good job. She saw that Ona Badje was pressing her back. Stokes sends it forward. Great control from... Ellen White, who's allowed to turn. Alessia Russo there getting the block off the pitch for the throw in. But we heard Willie Kirk speak about her pre game and about how important and how influential she can be for Manchester United. But for me, she needs to be in the nine. She needs to be in a central position. We haven't seen enough of her today. And it's difficult when you're out in that wide position when you want to be a centre forward and number nine. And, and that's your strength. will be fine with this little break but again the switch is on and it's another really good ball from Greenwood to find her England teammate Lucy Bronze away from Blundell trying to work the space and goes back to Park two excellent technicians on this right hand side for City Park though can't evade Leah Galton. As you said again, Alex Greenwood with that switch of play, that long ball down on this wing, and it, it's been pinpoint perfect. The distribution's been fantastic. But every time, whether it's Park, whether it's Lucy Bronze that gets on the ball, they look rather isolated. They haven't got someone coming over to join in. So then when they do try to run down the line to, to cause to cause some kind of attack. There's no one there combining with them to be able to play with them. Everything looks a little bit isolated for Manchester City at the moment. Oh, 
to. It's Lasada, now Park. Bronze first time cross. Stanway allowed to turn. And now Park. United back in a good shape after they were nearly caught out on the break. Greenwood gives it straight to Zellum. Just after speaking about the isolation down this wide area, Vicky Lasada came over to join in. You saw the triangle of Lasada, Bronze and Park. They combined well and got into that into that 18 yard box area but that's what they need to do more of they need to have one of those number 10s one of those attacking midfielders come over and join in to create those triangles to be able to break down this Manchester United back line well, and Wright loses out but it's uh, too much on that pass and Robot tries to get things going quickly Greenwood to Stanway. 64 goals and a sky blue shirt. Bronze. Now Lasada lays it off for Stanway. Deflected and it is another corner. Good defending again from Manchester United, but stronger, more more assertive play from Manchester City there. Bodies around the edge of the box. Lasada laying it off to Georgia Stanway. She's not a player you want to see have lots of time on the edge of the area, but good defending to get out and make the block. She is excellent from long range, Georgia Stanway. She is, and she won't think twice about unleashing a shot. Into the final five minutes of normal time. Greenwood, an excellent take from Earps. Brilliant take from Mary Earps there, adjusted her feet really well, held her position as well. She was under pressure there from Lucy Bronze, managed to not just claim it, but hold on to it as well, which takes a lot of pressure off, off your back line as you can calm down the, the momentum and, and, and kill the game, which is key at this point in time. Just needs a minute. Three different goalkeepers used at the Arnold Clark Cup for England. None of them let themselves down, really. No, the, the two goals conceded were absolutely brilliant goals. It's Hemp. Just flicked off the head of Ellen White. Again, it, the flick almost took it away from Jess Park. I think had Ellen White not got that flick on it, Jess Park was there at the back post ready to make connection. Obviously, Ellen White's going to go for it regardless. You can't expect her to leave a ball in that position, but frustrating for Park and a more promising position for her to find herself in. Stan White takes control. Back for Walsh, now bronze. Park seeing a lot of the ball on this near side. Oh, and she's a, around Hannah Blundell, but she got back well. Corner kick is given. It's always hard when you've got a left-footed centre-back that's your dominant distributor to make sure you have an even spread of where you're playing those balls. This right-hand side where Park is has predominantly been receiving it all, but I think for me, we want to see Lauren Hemp receiving those kind of balls, being able to turn and, and run at the back line of Manchester United. Sada, the outswinger, it's low. It's bronze. It's a sharp delivery in there from Lasada. Great first touch from Lucy Bronze. There were just too many bodies in the way. A fantastic touch and shot. As I said, Manchester United did enough to get enough bodies around it to, to force it wide of the goal. It's a year ago, her last goal. Lucy Bronze, which just happened to come against Manchester United. 
it's always good when you can save your goals for Derby Day. Caroline Weir does it absolutely at the at the peak. Now, luckily for her, Derby Day comes quicker and quicker. Just a fortnight to go. These two met at Manchester City's ground. And the win for City really shook up the WSL. Fantastic title race we've got and the race for the top three, the Champions League spots. Spurs, the unlikely team in third place. Again, Ellie Roebuck quick off her line. Yeah, her starting position in terms of three balls coming through today has been brilliant. She's been ready. She's been assertive. She's made decisions early and she's come through and cleared up when her back line have needed her. Thomas, perhaps a little bit of a surprise selection, but playing well, causing a few problems, and the rotation with Ella Toon has worked extremely well so far. Galton. Vernon. Just impeded. And Lasada, free kick to United really well held on to by Jackie Gronan there winning the foul for her team in, in, a, in a dangerous position when you've got Katie Zellum and the form that she is with just a minute left before half time this would be a brilliant time for Manchester United to score and a horrific time for, for City to concede so I'm sure they'll be doing their utmost to to prevent this one from going in the back of the net and keeping it away from Alessia Russo's head there's quite a few candidates to Good on the end of this, particular attention to Martha Thomas, who is so good in the air. Zellum sizing it up. Blundell, this is clever, but a bit too much on that for Ella Toon. Clever, but almost that little bit too clever. Rafaela Toon just left her foot in on Ellie Roebuck there. She's struggling slightly. Just a minute of time added on. And Ellie Roebuck up and ready to resume. aggressive and winning it back Thomas it's a good cut back but no one there maybe could have got a head up now Lauren Hemp trying to get away and then Badia Hemp eventually gets the decision initially it was brilliant defending from Ona Badia they managed to use her pace to get ahead of Lauren Hemp which I don't think anyone's ever actually probably said before, but then you, you can never discount Hemp, made it past her. And unfortunately for her, playing against Hemp in the second half, she's picked up a yellow card. I think she initially got there. And then Hemp with the kick and rush and Badia just wasn't going to let her get away. I'm not sure if, if to be honest, Ona Badia managed to get ahead of her, then got a slight shove from Hemp, which enabled Hemp to then get past her. So, she could be feeling a little bit hard done by there. Vicky Lasada receiving treatment. Yet another player who's had a significant timeout for the City side with injury. This won't be good viewing for Gareth Taylor. No, I'm sure he won't want to, to have a problem to Vicky Lasada, although they do have several options midfield wise. No, most probably most notably Caroline Weir who I'm sure Manchester United will not want to see coming onto the pitch on Derby Day today. Perhaps another issue in playing personnel for Gareth Taylor. 
Shall they want to try and get her in at half time and assess her? Well, that, that's what I was just about to say. Given the fact that we've only got one minute added time, we've already played over that. You'd think that potentially they're, they're not, surely not going to make a change now. You'd try and get in at half time, assess the situation properly, and then, then make a decision from there. She doesn't look happy, Lasada. Surely only seconds left to play, but uh, United have to keep their concentration. A set piece situation for City. Played well over the allotted minutes. That bounces straight through. And that's it. Very entertaining first half of high quality. And United have the advantage at the break thanks to Katie Zellum. Tremendous delivery from a corner that went all the way in. City have had a couple of half chances, but so far disciplined display from United, Siobhan. A very disciplined display, and I'd probably use the word aggressive as, as my main descriptor for their performance. Mark Skinner asked for it before the game. He said he wanted aggression in possession and out of possession, and they've done exactly that. They've done everything that he's asked for so far. The only thing that they could potentially say that they wanted more of is more goals to make this game more comfortable at halftime. Plenty for Rachel Brown Finnis and Willie Kirk to get their teeth into half time at Lee Sports Village. Manchester United 1, Manchester City 0. Thank you, Alex. Really intriguing second half in prospects here at Lee Sports Village. And perhaps a couple of changes for Manchester City. We'll get confirmation of them now. This is Vicky Lasada who went down at the end of that first half. It is off. Uh, Hayley Rasso has come on as well as Caroline Weir, a foe of Manchester United, especially in recent games. Jess Park, the other player to make way. What do you make of those changes for City, Siobhan? I think City needed to make some kind of change. They weren't really at the races that first half. They didn't do enough to get themselves ahead in the game. and. It just looked a bit lethargic and, and Rasso, who is full of speed, full of pace and power and will get beyond Manchester United's back line and we're, we all know exactly what she can do. So the, the two changes that attacking wise will hopefully give Manchester City a slightly different mentality. So as it stands, Manchester United going through to the quarterfinals of the FA Cup, but it'll be interesting to see how those two alterations change things from a Manchester City point of view and uh, perhaps uh, Mary Earps a little bit more concentration if she sees Caroline Weir lining one up from the edge of the penalty area she definitely won't want to see Caroline Weir lining one up from anywhere near the penalty area especially given how viral every single goal she scores against <laughs> her seems to go it's rough being a goalkeeper in those situations must have seen on the BBC Sports website and Twitter that uh, Caroline Weir carbon coffee chips comes at Stokes. Miscue from Ellen White and well handled by Mary Earps. Well handled, but I'd like to have seen Rasso there as it comes to her head to cut it back slightly. Weir and White were both there. She just made a poor decision going straight towards the keeper. There were two City players ready to pounce. Early promise, though, for City. Oops. Miss hits her clearance. Yeah. 
Weir slips it through towards Demi Stokes. Good sliding challenge from Coldwell. Hemp. Runs on to Rasso, Australian international, along with Alana Kennedy. A bit of time off over the last international break for the Europeans. As an international player within Europe, it can be tiring going away, but when you play for someone like Australia and you've got to travel the, the, the width of the world to get away and then to come back, it must take so much out of you. So I'm sure those, those players will be pleased to have had a little bit of downtime. These players in each squad played at the Arnold Clark Cup, so just travelling to Middlesbrough, Norwich, and Wolverhampton. It was a lot of hardship, but uh, playing in those consecutive storms can't have been uh, easy. Hemp putting Badia under pressure. And as expected, it's been a quick start from City who find themselves behind. It has, and I'm sure there'd have been some choice words both from players and from, from staff in that dressing room at, at, at half-time to, to let them know it's not good enough. If you want to win a Manchester derby, if you want to win any football match, let alone a Manchester derby, the standards need to be higher. It needs to be quicker, played with more tempo and with more quality. was a good chunk of that first half where Manchester United were really pushing for the second. They didn't find it. I hope it doesn't prove costly. They will do, and that's where the top teams punish you. They don't play particularly well, but when they get the opportunity, they take it. So with the flick on, it's Walsh. Kennedy. On to Stanway. Now Rasso, lovely flowing move from City. Ellen White can't get there, but Lauren Hemp can! Less than five minutes after the restart, and Manchester City draw level. Brilliant from Manchester City, and that's exactly the um, impact Gareth Taylor wanted when he brought Rasso onto the pitch. A brilliant delivery across the box. Number of Manchester City players waiting to put it in. It falls to Lauren Hemp, and she's not going to make a mistake from there. Manchester City are back in this game. Clean strike from Lauren Hemp. I think it may have even gone through the legs of Ona Badia just to add a little bit more sting to that. We have an FA Cup tie on our hands. Real blow for Manchester United, conceding that early on. And after being the better side for so much of that first half, don't have anything really to show for it. So on the move once again. Impact she's made from the bench at half time. Bronze. Near Golton back there trying to help out with the defending. Kennedy. Manchester City starting this second half. How Manchester United started the first, haven't let them out of their own their own area to start with, pressing them high, using pace, using aggression. It's exactly what Gareth Taylor would have wanted with the start of this game, this this half. A 
Lovely turn from White. Badia makes the clearance. Awkward one. Corner kick. This is where a team of the, the quality and the caliber of Manchester City, when they start dominating, they will make you pay. And with the quality of Alex Greenwood's distribution, her set pieces, you know, there's always going to be problems and questions asked. Greenwood delivers, it's flicked on by a United player, dangerously it's going to be retrieved here by Weir to Stokes, time to pick out the cross, again well taken by Erbs, who wants to get things going quickly but is stopped by Ellen White, showing her experience there. Definitely showing her experience, she could see Mary Earps lining up the long free ball to Ella Toon who was making the run present herself a yellow card but if it's kept her team even in this game I'm sure she'll take it frustration from Mary Earps there after a great take there's nothing better as a goalkeeper coming out taking a beautiful cross and pinging a ball down the other end of the pitch and then hopefully getting an assist but Ellen White was having none of it Ellen White with the yellow card it it's all Manchester City now Rousseau on the line trying to find two a good touch from Alana Kennedy and the substitutes have made a big difference the intent there as well from City now they have, they're on the front foot, they're pressing aggressively, they're moving the ball at a quicker pace. As you said, the, the intent from Manchester City is definitely there this half. Badia, two. It's one touch passing from United. Russo's back heel doesn't quite find the intended targets, but it's back with Zellum. Now Grunen. Blundell providing the width. 1-2 with Golton, Rasso back there, the pace not only causing problems in the attacking third but in their defensive one as well. Free kick to United. Interesting decision to make the foul there, it didn't look like Leah Golton was really going anywhere. Just got the knock there from, from Rasso. She was just a little bit late. The ball had already gone. Simple decision really for the referee there. And this is the goal that has drawn Manchester City level. That's what Lauren Hemp is so good at doing. How she times her runs in at that back post space, whether it's on the floor, in the air, she times it perfectly. And that's how she scores so many goals, as well as being great on the ball. Her football brain to know exactly when to exploit those areas is, 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 is brilliant. Her 11th of the season and her 8th in the last 12. Really enjoying a prolific period and how important she will be for England in the summer. The chance on the set piece. Zellum delivers, but uh, easily cleared. Bronze. Stokes. Good play from Badia. Thought about sliding and putting the ball out of play. Instead, keeps possession. It's not a great pass from Zellum. Gives it away in a dangerous area. Now here's Rasso on the move again. Hemp forced back.
And where City looked toothless in the first half, they now look very dangerous indeed. Bronze nearly finding White. Talk about the confidence of Manchester City. I think that that's demonstrated by the amount of ro more rotation that they have. You see there, Lucy Bronze picking up the ball in the centre of the park. You want to see rotation. It makes it so much harder for, for the United players to be able to know where to pick them up. The amount of movement that you're seeing from Manchester City in the second half has been... Uh, un, uh, I mean, you couldn't even recognise it from the first. Walsh. Weir. Pick up those spaces in between defence and midfield. Clearance by Badia, but City looking a lot more fluid in their movement. Golton. Can't quite pick out Martha Thomas. Probably one of the few times, though, that Manchester United have actually used Martha Thomas as an as a out-and-out number nine to pin, to use her to pin the ball, to hold it up and to bring others into play. And it worked really effectively. It's just that final ball wasn't there. Oh, and that's a, a short pass back. It's White and City lead. A horrible moment for Hannah Blundell. And Ellen White took full advantage. One she won't want to be seeing again. The header wasn't wasn't firm enough. Ellen White's not going to miss from there. An awful moment for Manchester United. Miscommunication, whether it was between Blundell and Earps, whether she felt she was higher up the pitch. But in those situations, you've got to clear your lines, especially when you've got someone as dominant in front of goal as Ellen White charging you down. Mary Earps. I think uh, expressing her frustration there. It's a really awkward ball, wasn't it? And with Rasso, who's already looked like she's spooked the Manchester United back line since coming on. Just a difficult decision to make. The wrong one in the end. And Manchester City now 2 1 up. So frustrating for Manchester United with how well they played in that first half. They completely dominated. They played on the front foot, created opportunities. And now just 15 minutes into this second half that they find themselves 2-1 down. Brilliant pass out to this near side for Lauren Hemp. Weir. And it's crept in. Caroline Weir does it again against Manchester United who are on the verge of a complete capitulation it's a great through ball here and Lauren Hemp does well picks out Caroline Weir but Mary Earps has got to do better there it's a goalkeeping mistake she'll be the first to hold her hands up there she's been brilliant for Manchester United this season and she'll be incredibly frustrated that's a basic error for her and Manchester United now need to move forward from that. Nowhere near as spectacular as her goal two weeks ago, Caroline Weir, but just as effective. And Manchester United can't lose their heads. There's still a long way to go. Two goals in two minutes from Manchester City. string passes together at the moment United City swarming all over them Stanway finds Rasso this is where earlier we spoke about the top teams dominate and make the most of positions when they're in them and Manchester City they were poor in that first half but they managed to stay in the game they were only a goal down and now when they've been given that opportunity to get back in the game they've taken each and every one of them Put the first City goal down to a really good team move, but the 
the next two have been high profile errors really they have and Manchester United over the past few weeks the past couple of months they've defended really well they've, they've been organized they've done well in a unit so they'll be frustrated by that especially coming so close together that this is now when you need your leaders to step up and help you get back on track and get that momentum back in the game we're forward for Ellen White Manchester City cooking on gas now Lauren Hemp though took the shot good block she may have hurt herself in the process looked like it was a really strong block there it's called well coming in to make the block against her it connected with that whether it's the ankle she seems to have some strapping on her knee hopefully not just for Manchester City but for England as well she stays as fit as possible for the for the next few months leading into a very important home championship that's right this is the it's all part of the season when you're looking ahead to European championships when fans of all countries feel nervously whenever players go down look injured Manchester United they're continuing to be positive trying to play out and we spoke about the game against Chelsea at the start of the season where they they got caught out by playing out time and time again I think at the moment with the pressure they're under how positive Manchester City are being playing high up the pitch it could be the time to switch it up a little bit go a bit longer hold the ball up higher up the pitch and buy yourself a little bit of time onto Toon. There also might be a little bit of a psychological hurdle that Manchester United need to get over. I'm sure there is and especially when when there's a lot of talk about you can beat the teams in and around you but can you step into that top three? When things are going your way it's great but when things get a little bit difficult that's when you earn your space in that top three. So, defending from Blundell. We've seen nothing of the United forward players, or barely anything, in the second half, and I think that's really down to Manchester City. It is, although I wouldn't be surprised if we see a couple of changes for, from Manchester United coming soon, hoping for the impact that Manchester City subs had. Hemp comes off Badia, Caldwell clears right on cue United getting ready to make the changes we smell the deep heat up here Toon that's a wonderful ball Bolton latches onto it. And the flicked header from Russo wasn't bad at all. It was a good attempt, Manchester United's best attempt so far in this half. And we've spoken about Manchester City and the importance of their wide players, Hemp, Rasso this half. Leah Golton is just as vital for Manchester United, but she hasn't had the service as much as she'd want to be on the ball. We see there the way she cut in and delivered that ball across for Russo. She's dangerous both when she cuts in and goes out wide herself, but Manchester United need to get her on the ball more. Sinja Bruin ready to come on. Danish international. The well on international duty, the Algarve Cup, but uh, an outbreak of COVID in the camp and the tournament came to an end prematurely. We've got a statement signing when uh, that was announced on deadline day. It certainly was and, and she's a brilliant player, but one that probably hasn't quite found her feet for Manchester United yet. 
think it's a, a difficult task to fit Russo and Brun both in that team, both in their best positions. I said before, I like to see Russo central. Brun also wants to play in that central position. So it's a tough task for Mark Skinner to, to fit them all in perfectly. So Sunia Brun coming on for Martha Thomas. And Kirsty Hansen also on for Alessia Russo. So we're in international duty this week with Scotland. And has scored previously against Manchester United a couple of seasons ago here in a two-all draw. Do have a lot of depth in those forward positions, but sometimes you wonder if they're all in the right position for them to get the best out of them. Most definitely, especially you look at Kirsty Hansen, she had a great start to the season, she was getting lots of minutes, picked up an injury and has struggled really to kind of get any game time on the pitch moving forward, but she's a left-footed player, she's one that you'd probably like to see on that left side, but she's not going to displace Leah Golton. And if you can get them both on the pitch, enable them to cut in field a little bit more, a bit more rotation. But no one's really nailed down that, that right wing position for Manchester United this season. Weir. Beautifully done. of passes for Greenwood but she dealt with it very well indeed and the City have worked their way out of this situation nicely Greenwood up to White couldn't control and here's Zellum for United Bruin thought she was caught Greenwood perhaps more up to speed with the game Stanway. Maybe one too many touches, but play is brought to an end. And it's a United free kick. Hayley Rasso there on Leah Golton again. Not the first time. Sure, it probably won't be the last either. Good battle going on down on that far side in this second half. Definitely picked up intensity and tempo with the changes that have been made. That's a good looking ball towards Bruin. It's Greenwood won it. You see Walsh was trying to play in Rasso, and that's another loose pass. Ellen White can't quite match Caldwell. Hanson. How oh, bad you're under pressure. City playing with such confidence. Stanway. Rasso back to Stanway. And deflected into the gloves of Mary Earps. Positive combination play there from the Manchester City forward line. Only thing I was slightly surprised at is that Georgia Stanway didn't unleash the shot first time. What well, she was driving in, the Manchester United line just looked like they're backing off her a little bit, which is a dangerous thing to do when you've got Stanway charging down against you. Certainly having a much better time than she did in the fixture here in the WSL. Early red card. To be fair, she was playing at right back. She's been asked to play in pretty much every single position including goalkeeper that was close wasn't it had a 
got a shirt made up just in case. I actually spoke to her after that match and said that I really wanted to see her come on. I think we all did. Here's Galton. Toon's made the run forward. Instead, it's towards Zellum. Badia well, gets the cross in. Good defending there from Demi Stokes. I think she's been solid today. She, she's worked well with Lauren Hem. She's overlapped. She got forward, especially in those that first half hour. I think everything positive that did come from Manchester City. Don't get me wrong, it wasn't their best first half performance, but probably did come down that, that left side with them overlapping. Weir turns into trouble. Zella delivers the cross, but only Golton in the penalty area. Bronze finds White. Here is Grunen. Kirsty Hansen. We'll get there ahead of Demi Stokes. I've got a lot of support. Stokes holds her up for now. And the referee has stopped play. I think it looked like Demi Stokes got a slight nick on Kirsty Hansen's ankle. The assistant referee un convincingly flagging for a for a free kick there it did look like Demi Stokes did clip her ankles and I think it is a free kick but it's a bit more sure. assertiveness shown perhaps not sure she agrees on the expression on her face but uh, free kick it is to Manchester United Oh, and it's been lost. Toon. That's not a bad effort at all. She couldn't go low. There were too many bodies in the way, but off target. It's not a bad effort at all. As you said, there were so many bodies in that, in and around that six yard box. The only place Ella Toon could, could go was over the top. Maybe it needed a little bit more delicacy from it to get it up and down in time. It wasn't the distance to really go with the power but more promising from Manchester United. So next up for Manchester City, and our next showing of women's football, Chelsea against Manchester City next week. The League Cup final live from Plough Lane, five o'clock on BBC Two. Make sure you join us for that one. taking her time and playing a clever ball forward for Weir now Hemp Kennedy sends it forward There's been a real confidence this half in how Manchester City have moved the ball around. The first half, they looked like there was a little bit of uncertainty when they're moving it around at the back. There's been nothing of the sort this half. Moving it around with composure, one and two touch, so much movement, variation, rotation, a completely different team.
so unless uh, something pretty remarkable happens, an early exit from the FA Cup for Manchester United, although Roebuck taking a chance, goodness me, she's still going. She forgets she was a goalkeeper. I think it could have been the commentator's curse of saying how composed they've been playing out at the back. They just got a little bit over-composed, over-sure of themselves there. I think she was grateful in the end for being a goalkeeper as she could just collapse on the ball and pick it up. But Manchester City need to stay switched on and not get too complacent with, with their movement and how they are playing out from the back. As, as positive as I was about it, it can all change in just one moment. Got away with one there. Any robot fancying a little dribble inside her area. A couple of subs for Manchester City. Julia Blackstad coming on as well as Khadija Bunny Shaw. Lauren Hemp making way. And the rest, so is Ellen White. Two of the goal scorers off. And some minutes for Shaw and new signing Julia Blackstad. Sweden. Given how important Lauren Hemp is to this side to be able to take her off after 77 minutes is a luxury I'm sure they'll they'll definitely relish and enjoy as much as they can. rotation in the number nine position between White and Short. was heavy but she got there all the same Blackstad could save and it's put in the rebound Bunny Shaw just seconds after coming onto the pitch puts Manchester City into the quarterfinals of the FA Cup full credit for Gareth Taylor for his substitutions today it's another one that's made an instant impact another two you could say Blackstad with the the initial shot, Mary Earps makes the block, but unfortunately it pops out straight to Shaw, who's in the right place at the right time to slot it home. Happy with that, the day's work. Khadija Shaw. The third goal in the FA Cup. It's her seventh in all competitions this season. An afternoon that's Mary Earps and Manchester United that started so well, but one they'll want to put behind them very quickly. With our guys with the stopwatch, apparently 39 seconds between Honey Shaw coming on and putting the ball in the net. Not bad. Is that an FA Cup record or? I think maybe we could do more. <laughs> I'm sure someone will know. Got to be close. in your opinion has this been a bit of a collapse from Manchester United or has this just been a, a brilliant second half display from Manchester City I think you've got to say it's a combination of the two Manchester City have been brilliant but in moments where the game's on on a pivot where it's changing from from 
when you're in control to out of it. You've got to have key players that step up and take control of the situation. And Manchester United kind of let things run away from them too quickly and then found themselves out of the game. Bruin won't get onto that. Blackstad coming away from that with Ono Badia. Still battling. It's a game now where it's got to the point that Manchester City are, are pretty much home and dry. But for both teams, they won't want to see any of their players picking up injuries. Especially on Obadje, she's so vital to Manchester United. And they've got a lot left to play for in the league. And another yellow card. For that challenge on a on a badia. Georgia Stanway. Now next up for Manchester United, a big game of the WSL next weekend. Back here against Leicester City. And we want to get back on track as quickly as possible. Zellum delivers, and that will be Ellie Roebucks. I think that delivery sums up the two differences between Manchester United's performance. The first half, Katie Zellum's deliveries were fantastic. She was probably my player of the first half, but second half, she hasn't really been able to get on the ball and that delivery for her was poor. Stanway loses out. Manchester United is going to make some subs now. The game is certainly up for them, but uh, a couple more players on the pitch. Leah Galton coming off for Ivana Fuso, Jackie Grun, and also withdrawn. For a reset. The player to come on for the final six minutes. So, disappointing afternoon for Manchester United. And no closer to that elusive first trophy since they were reborn in 2018. But I think it's important to stress that winning a trophy is very, very difficult. There aren't that many. You need to get your way all the way through to the final and then try and win that as well. It's, it's easier said than done. It most definitely is, but I think having played for Manchester United, having been a part of the club, it's a club that has high demands, high expectations, and regardless of the fact that they're only four years old, the club expects success and they'll expect continued investment, continued development and to be pushing higher up and one of those goals will have to be Champions League football this season. And that is still very much in the balance. Wouldn't be surprised if we went down to the final day. So many teams want to get in the top three and get that Champions League football for next season. A substitution confirmation of that. Uh, Alana Kennedy off for Philippa Angledahl. Unlike the first chunk of the season, City with some real depth now in their squad. Be well set for the business end of the season. They definitely are, and if you can rotate Lucy Bronze into centre back and Georgia Stanway back to your right back positions and still feel comfortable and composed and bring other internationals on it's a brilliant place to be in Russo has been an absolute nuisance down that right hand side Rasso has been a nuisance and it's been the changes in this game that have been the difference Rasso we're then making those two other changes that led straight into another goal but Gareth Taylor's got to be pleased with, with a good day's work
birthday on Friday. Gareth uh, Taylor deserves a couple more cold ones after this. Nice early kickoff for him as well. So uh, plenty of time to sit back and relax. Brasso. Just evade angle dial. Burr reset. It was Hansen who his pass was intercepted. Just about gathered by Mary Earps. Sure, she would have been pleased to see that end up in her hands with the run of Shaw just across that near post, as you said, just made it into her hands. And on a day that hasn't ended up well for Manchester United, <laughs> that wouldn't have been the way we'd want to see it finish. So Siobhan, it's time to ask your FA Women's Cup player of the match. For me, it, it's got to be the player that's made the biggest impact in this game, Caroline Weir. Since she's come on, she's, she's changed that midfield, how dynamic it is. Moving forward, she's got herself a goal. Rasso was close, but for me, Caroline Weir's just edged it. Well, the starring role in a defeat to Manchester United. They must be sick of the sight of her. Most definitely, and I think for me, the characters she shows, even when she's not on that starting lineup, to still come onto the pitch, make the impact she does, whether it's a 10 minute cameo to score a goal, or whether it's a 45 minutes to come on and show exactly what she could do. Every time, time and time again, she gives you results. Blackstad just offside there. So, nicks it off Blundell, who's not going to catch it. Putting on the afterburners. Grasso, Shaw. It's parried again. And as Blackstone put it into the net, the referee blew for a foul on Onabadia. Manchester United. Keep it at 4 1. Oh, she's given it. 5 1. They were sure it was a foul. And Manchester City have five. Lovely flowing move. Hayley Rasso at the centre of it. Still seems to be some kind of confusion here as to whether it is a goal or whether it's... I, I'm not sure she has given it as a goal. Ona Badje definitely down in the, on the ground in, in significant pain here. Rasso starts it as she follows in. She does foul Ona Badje and the, the referee has now given a free kick to Manchester United. So a rare bit of light in this second half. I think it's probably the right decision. You saw as Badgie was there trying to defend the ball, Hayley Rasso came through the back of her. Thankfully, it's not a moment that's going to completely change the game. You hate to see referee and decisions impacting games like that. I think the game's well and truly already done. <laughs> Like I thought she'd had her first Manchester City goal, which is going to be part of a big Manchester City win. Four minutes of time added on. still down and eventually she does get the foul restart quickly Manchester United stepping up these last four minutes with a bit more intensity but I think it's a little bit too late for now Zella managed to, to get around Rasso beats her again and delivers. Fuso's touch though, a little bit heavy. She's done well to get back and keep possession. Well, Manchester United are beaten, well beaten, but still trying, trying to perhaps finish with something positive. 
I think if you can finish with a flurry of positivity, even if you lose the game, if you can get a late goal, gives you something to hold on to moving forward to show that you've got the right mentality, the right attitude to keep stepping it up even in time, tough times. Space allowed to drive forward. Two minutes left of time added on. Weir. Good run for Blackstad and good defending. Caldwell, goal kick. Good defending covering across there from Caldwell. Another beautiful through ball for, from Caroline Weir. I think sometimes she just makes football look easy. She's so technically gifted, the weight on the pass was just perfect, almost. Yeah, she always looks like she's got a little bit more time than everyone else. You see some people play football and it just looks like it comes so naturally to them. And you think, this is someone that knows how to play football a little bit. City have shown good character perhaps earlier in the season this wouldn't have happened they conceded careless goals and didn't come back from it but greater resilience now definitely and I think it, it was easy to criticize Ellie Roebuck for that first goal but I think since she's come back into this side it's definitely given them more of an air of confidence playing out through that back line. They could yet get their fifth. Ball just runs away from Weir. Barisa. Two, that's an excellent pass to Kirsty Hansen. Showing a good turn of pace. It's Hansen. Brilliant turn of pace there from Kirsty Hansen. That's exactly what we know she can do. She's come back out to that left-hand side, but she's not just dominant on that left foot. The way she can cut in and deliver with her right foot is excellent. Full time, and it's Manchester United who book their place in the quarterfinals of the FA Cup. A second half blitz did it for Manchester United. It all started so well with Katie Zellum's corner giving Manchester United a first half lead but City just blew them away in the second. It's another positive result for the blue side of Manchester. The red side will be glad to see the back of them for the rest of this season at least. Siobhan, a, a mature performance in the end from City. A really mature performance and as I said before to be able to have a poor first half like they did but to still keep themselves in contention only be one goal down when they're going in at half time it always gives you